person who is trained in Ghana is a better lawyer than a person who is qualified as a lawyer elsewhere. If we had such an evidence or such evidence in the system, then we can justify why someone who is coming from, who is competent to practice in a more, with all due respect, a more sophisticated jurisdiction, to now have to go through not just one month, not two months, one year of basically unregulated pupillage. So first of all, there is no evidence that that is needed. And even if it is needed, what measures do we have in place to actually ensure that what we expect them to know is what is being taught under the pupillage program? Um, I have seen, um, currently, the law school has uh, posted students to law firms. Uh, I mean, the, the General Legal Council has posted students to law firms for pupillage. And you'll be surprised to know that some of the law firms that they post these students to don't actually exist. Some of them have been out of practice for years. What it tells us is that the General Legal Council has no interest in actually knowing what happens in the law firms that they post these students to. So even the pupillage program itself has its own you know, challenges. So something like this, I think, should be uh, reconsidered. And if you ask me to propose, I would say that you are better off attaching such a person to a specific state institution for not more than maybe a quarter, three months. For example. For, uh, so, for example, for AG's department, where the pay maybe legal aid, go and then use your knowledge to help legal aid and also take the opportunity to see how things are done. If you are into criminal, you know, uh, practice or if you are into corporate, you know, governance issues, go to, let's say, GRA and go and learn how they do their thing. Because those departments or those agencies already have legal department, who, I mean, that performs some of these functions. So if you ask me, I think there should be more detailed uh, uh, provision on the, just to say, come and then go through the for one year but is a challenge. But, but I love it. There are certain things that you do need to learn in practice. You can't learn that in the book. For example, I always cite uh, one of the examples. When clients come to you breathing fire and brimstone as to why, how they were committed to their cause and all, you can't learn that in school. But in practice, you realize you, you would learn from observing, just like any other profession, whether it is hairdressing, whether it is auto mechanics, whether it is accounting, whether it's architecture, you do need the practical but experience. Isn't that what the Ghana School of or the professional law course would teach you? That's what, no. They, they, that's why I say that they shouldn't be running a school in the first place. They cannot teach you that. They, they, uh, some of the things that you learn in practice, you won't get in the classroom. Why? So they Ghana, for example, the, 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 the management of clients that I talked about. It's just like any other profession. I don't think that if you want to do hairdressing, let me say hairdressing, that they can put you in the classroom and teach you how to do the hairdressing and you don't try your hands on it with another, uh, at least somebody who has some experience and learn a bit more. So the pupillage, I think, is necessary. Okay. It is anything if, and it comes, for example, let, let me tie that in with lawyers or in other jurisdictions. I don't think it's about the sophistication of the jurisdiction. There are certain basic, it shouldn't be, I don't think I agree one year to that one. But for example, our land law. Our land law may have its own peculiarities. Our judicial system may have its own peculiarities. There's nothing wrong in getting to understand the peculiarities of a particular jurisdiction. It doesn't, it doesn't mean your training is inferior, but every jurisdiction has its peculiarities. I don't still think for such persons it should be one year. So from what I hear you say, we need the pupillage because it gives you more... If you want to practice, especially in the courts, then you need some prior exposure. I mean, this is a very court-centric argument. Not all lawyers are interested in practicing in courts, but even assuming all of us are interested in practicing in courts. This is why I said in the programs, that are offered, we have what we call tri practice and clinics. And if these clinics are well run, they can give you much better exposure, much controlled exposure than you would get in a pupillage where uh, I have some friends doing pupillage and they are attached to the courts. They go there in the morning and they sit in the diary till five o'clock and then they come home. And this is torture. This is not learning. This is nothing. This is a waste of your time. So rather than uh, say graduate and then we'll teach you how to do law. While studying the law, you do clinics and in the clinics you do everything that a law firm will do under the supervision of a law uh, professor. 
So you will take uh, complaints from clients, you will write writs, you will file uh, appearances, and so on and so forth. You can get all that experience in the classroom, within the program. So I agree with her that yes, some exposure is needed, especially if you want to practice in the courts. But it shouldn't be one year. Not only shouldn't it be one year, it should be part of the program. You shouldn't finish your studies, and then now that you finish studying law, now that you're going to learn how to practice law. No, it should be integrated. This is why I said sometimes the myth that there are some discontinuities between academic education and professional education need to be debunked because the two should be integrated. While you are studying the academics, you should also be practicing that. And that's why clinics are very important. In the US, everyone, I hate to give US examples, because every time you give US examples, you say, oh no, but we are not US. Many of the interesting Supreme Court cases have actually been filed by students as part of their clinic, uh, clinic uh, education. And that's what we need. I know Gimpa has beautiful clinics and they have beautiful moot courts and so on and so forth. These are all ways that we are teaching people how to practice in the court setting. 